On a guess, lend me your ears. Long as our Fevremont suffered, without a true monarch to guide her and her people. Decades have passed since last His Majesty Erland sat atop the Draken throne. Long have we endured, yet it has not been for naught. At last, the bell has tolled on the age of the Consul. At last, we may celebrate the coming of our rightful ruler. The return of the Sovereign. <laughs> My word! Such an inspiring visage! Your Majesty shall have my eternal hey, fealty. Your no Majesty, of how long I have waited this moment. It's the rightful inheritor of the Draken Throne, chosen by the Dragon as its enemy. Behold and rejoice! Fortune has delivered us our savior at last! At last! Praise be, for only the Sovereign's guidance can lead us true. All hail the Sovereign! All hail! Let all present pledge their allegiance to the Sovereign let us be united in the hope that our legions reign when they are end. Long live the Sovereign of Ramon! Long live the Sovereign! Arisen, thou who wouldst slay the dragon, if thou seekest to behold this world in its true aspect, abandon thy reason. Cast aside thine heart and thy life both. I ask thee to demonstrate thy will, for naught but thine ambition can alter the course of the rivers of fate. Which one of you was it? No need to be shy. I've just got to take down a record of your name and face. Come on, step forward. I ill like that look in your eyes. Tis queerly brazen for a pawn. Most of your kind have eyes blank as a cadaver's. Mayhap tis only natural seeing as how you rise from the dead. There's aught different about you, though. Could it be that you fear death just as we mortals do? Worry not, Vessel. Three days here, and you'll be longing for death's sweet embrace. Come along, you feckless dullards. Pain you. Pray, do not overexert yourself. 
This is no place for one of your ilk. Tis harsh beyond measure. Even we pawns are pushed to the brink. You ought not anger the overseer. Let us proceed to the site. What is this commotion? Perhaps we ought to investigate. No one could survive a fall from this height. Not even a pawn.
Great. Keep your distance, Arisa. Worry not for me. The brine may swallow me whole, but I will not perish. There is a stone not far from here, known as a Rift Stone. Pray, seek it out. If you're truly the Arisen, then our paths will surely cross again. Oi! Are you all right? What happened here? A griffin appears one moment and falls the next. And now you stand before me. Was it you then? The one who was riding on its back? It is a wonder you survived. Accompany me to the stronghold. We'll treat your wounds and hear your story. Where exactly is this jail you say you escaped from, anyway? I've never heard of such a place. There's certainly naught like that here in Burma. Could it be you were held in the neighboring country of Batal? Nay, I suppose that's unlikely. We've been estranged from Batal ever since the war. It is difficult to imagine any citizen of Vermont being sent there. Fie! Goblins! Let's take up your weapon, sir. You'll be needing it. Where are you going? I'll not force you to receive treatment, but I'd at least like a word. There are oft items to be scavenged from the bodies of monsters and... Welcome, Arisen. We pawns have long awaited your arrival. What is this? Pawns? They bend the knee to you so readily, but then... No. Surely you cannot be the Arisen. You seek the Riftstone, do you not? We can take you to it. Pray, come this way. Before you stands a Riftstone. Tis a gate by which we of the Pawn Legion may cross o'er into this world. Pray, summon your pawn. Simply paint with your mind's eye the loyal attendant whom you would have serve you. Pawns are known as crosses of the rift for we are able to connect to and traverse other realms beyond this one. When we return, it is our duty to use our experiences and the knowledge we have gained to aid you on your journey arisen. From this day forth, I shall serve you as your loyal pawn, and aught I learn beyond the rift will be at your disposal. Well, I'll be a pawn summoning before my very eyes. You truly are the arisen then. Strange. I thought the Arisen was in the capital. Surely there's only meant to be one Arisen. Fie, this is all beyond my ken. The Watchhead would know what to do, I'm sure. Though, as luck would have it, he's away. I suppose we'll save any further questions till the Watchhead returns. You're free to do as you like afore then. What? You've no memories, you say? Mayhap you could make for Melv, then. It was set upon by the dragon not long ago. The Arisen is said to bear some deep connection to the dragon. Should you be Arisen, mayhap you'll recall aught of import there.
the state of the village. It is a sorry sight indeed. The dragon truly is calamity. Pity a is most unfortunate, but it doth not release thee from thy fate. Can you hear me, sir? Sir, stay with me. Goodness, how are you feeling? This is the second time I've watched over you like this, isn't it? You do not remember? Then have you forgotten that you protected me from the dragon's flames? You withstood the fire in my stead and were well and truly charred. It was terrible. I had thought your life forfeit. I could not hear the beating of your heart but you hung on and by some miracle survived arisen i'm afraid i don't understand your meaning 
Does it have aught to do with why you were taken to the castle? They said twas so that your wounds could be treated, though I fear you have no memory of this either. Has he come for you? We are to part so soon, then. Mayhap you will visit me again someday. Till then. Take care. Marison. Ah, excellent. You must be the one. You match my soldier's description. I'm glad I found you. The ruler of Vermont, currently convalescing in the capital, became arisen here in this very village. If you claim the same, then word must be borne to the capital. I dispatched a missive before coming here, though I doubt the matter can be settled without your presence. Would you be willing to accompany me to the capital? If you truly are arisen, you will be received with open arms. Oh, but forgive me. I scattered my soldiers in a bid to find you. I would not depart without them. We shall have to wait till they are reassembled. Come to think of it, Sir Leonard was asking after you as well. Mayhap now would be a good time to speak with him. Last I saw, he was having a drink at the inn. Well, Matt, you're the one who saved Ulrika's life, aren't you? She told me all about it. It was a very brave thing you did. I'm in your debt. Ulrika's as good as my daughter. Here, consider this a small token of my gratitude. Now, tell me, are you registered with a guild? Perhaps you already know this, but registering with a guild will grant you access to specialized training, which comes in very useful when pursuing a vocation. Well, now, that won't do. You need only speak with the innkeeper to register. Go on, it will only take a moment. If there is aught you wish to know of vacations, mayhap I can advise you. Should you dedicate yourself to a vocation, you will find that new paths to master will open up to you over time. Try them as you like. Very well. There is no wrong choice in any case. It is entirely up to you which vocation you adopt. But I shan't take up any more of your time. Pray, be well. Ah, you've returned. Good timing, too. I have questions for you. First and foremost, will you accompany me to the capital? My thanks. Are you ready to depart, or do you need some time to prepare? Good. Then let us be on our way. Arisen is the lawful ruler of Vermin. So it has always been. To claim the title is to claim the throne. Yet not all claims are true. Our kingdom sees many pretenders, and they are not dealt with by me. Regardless, I do well not to invite my mistrust. Who's that you've brought with you, Watchhead, sir? An Arisen, by all appearances. An Arisen? Another pretender, you mean? I see the Sovereign's ascension has done little to stop such charlatans from plying their trade. Tis uncertain. This one commands the loyalty of the pawns. What? Impossible. You know as well as I do that there can be but one Arisen, and he's up in the palace. I'm well aware of how preposterous the idea is, thank you. However, as I do not believe it my place to rule on such a matter, I will make my report to the capital. If the claim is false, we will be rewarded handsomely for our trouble. If the claim is true, however, 
Who can say? All's been arranged. Come, let us pass through the gate. I don't know about you, Master, but I'm worn out. Mightn't we have a rest before pressing on? An ox cart was meant to meet us, yet it is nowhere in sight. Or it may have befallen it. Best we press on. Everyone all right. More marks of the dragon's fury. Its rampage must have weakened the earth here. What's this? We're trapped. Judged you. I had taken you for another false arisen. Goodness knows we see a lot of them. Yet the valley you showed in coming to our aid has dispelled such thoughts. Here, take this as a mark of my trust. Give it to one of the sentinels stationed at the gates to the capital, and you'll be granted an audience with Captain Brandt. You're free to make your own way to the capital now. I see no need to keep you under constant watch. And I'm sure you'll breathe a little easier as well, I. Of course, if you'd rather continue to accompany us, you are still welcome to join us on the Oxcart. Tis your decision. Well now. The road's blocked. The cart can't get through like this. A powerful current ought to set this rock to crumbling. If we could summon one. not to be water here. I have an ill feeling about this. Ah, here's the cart now. Do you intend to join us? Very well. Board the ox cart and we'll be off.
I was informed of your coming would be arisen. Captain Brandt, this individual summoned a pawn through a rift stone. Several witnesses can attest to it. Though I admit I had my doubts at first, it would seem this is no mere deceiver. This one's not a bad sort. Saved our hides on the way here. As decreed by the great will of our world, there can only be one arisen. That arisen now resides within the palace. Indeed, he is our sovereign and the rightful ruler of Vermont. It follows, therefore, that this ruffian before us is naught but a pretender. You must submit to questioning. If you value your life, you will not attempt to flee. I shall conduct the interrogation myself. Stand watch outside. I beg your forgiveness for my insolence, Your Majesty. If the Queen Regent had learned of your existence, I fear your life would have been in peril. I had no choice but to treat you as a pretender, lest my actions draw suspicion from watchful eyes. Then you have truly lost your memory? In that case, may I, I ought to explain the situation before we proceed. You, and no other, are the sovereign, the only legitimate ruler of this kingdom. Some days passed, you confronted the dragon in the village of Melv, whereupon you became arisen. The people rejoiced, for our true liege had finally appeared, and in Vermont's long years of council rule. Yet, not all celebrated your coming. Your arrival would have robbed the Queen Regent Deesa of everything. During the time of the previous council, she acted as a queen in her own right, ruling the palace as she saw fit. And just after the council's passing, when twas all but certain that her son would take his father's place, word reached the castle that the Arisen had been found. To Deesa, your majesty's very existence is naught but an obstacle to her own family's continued prosperity. The assassination of the Arisen is an impossible feat for mortal hands. Thus, Deesa chose to abduct your majesty while you recovered from your wounds, in order to rob you of your memory with a fell curse and sell you to Batal as a slave. Following that, she prepared a replacement to serve as the sovereign in your stead, a mere puppet. However, with your majesty returned, I have no intention of twiddling my thumbs as Deesa plays her games. I shall devise some plans to further our cause. Pray, visit me a night in the tavern that we might discuss them. This one's cleared of all suspicion and has my permission to remain in the capital. You are to trouble the good sir no further. Are we clear? Your Majesty, your timing is impeccable. I just thought to call for you. Tis not a matter for prying ears. Pray, let us speak out here. As I informed you when last we spoke, the palace is filled with the Queen Regent's sycophants. Should Deesa denounce your majesty as a false arisen, few would elect to doubt her. Yet if we are to prove your identity, I believe there is no occasion more suitable than the coronation. It was delayed so that the sovereign, that is, the false arisen, could convalesce in the palace, but the date has now been set. The central players in the court ought all be in attendance. It would be a fine opportunity to display your majesty's power. None would be able to deny that you are the true arisen then. There is a problem, however. Entry to such an event is limited to the chosen few. Only select members of the nobility and citizens 
who have contributed greatly to Vermont's continued prosperity, will be granted entry. If your majesty is to be counted among them, you will need to attend to a number of tasks. Pray, allow me to summarize them for you. The citizenry have called upon my soldiers to cull monsters that plague the land. I dare say, it would be a fine contribution were you to accomplish these tasks unaided. What say you? Might I ask for your cooperation in this matter? I thank you, your majesty. There are three locales that have seen significant trouble of late. The first is Trevo Mine, to the northwest. We've had reports of goblins swarming in great numbers. Next is Half Village, west of Vernworth. I believe soldiers have already been dispatched to call an infestation of Saurians there. Finally, there is a call for someone to locate a group of soldiers tasked with delivering freight. They were last seen crossing the second bridge on the eastern edge of Vermin. It is our duty to bring the beasts low. By combining our strengths, we shall overcome this trial as all others. Oh, you've come to a dangerous place. Scaly beasts make this their den. We've been dispatched to cull them. A small force ventured inside, though I've seen neither hide nor hair of them since. Seems the battle is hard won. I'll not stop you if you wish to explore, but don't look for my aid if aught goes awry. It is in caverns such as these that monsters thrive. Tread carefully. One never can be too cautious. It is easily done. Debt, sir. Thanks to your valor, I shall live to fight another day. You went in there to save my fellow soldiers? Well now, I underestimated you, friend. I shall send word of your deeds to the captain. You've done well this day. I thank you. We'll see to the rest of this mess. You need not trouble yourself further. To steal yourselves! Cut the fiends down! Don't let them touch the shipment! How did this happen? We must defend the cargo! They were delicious, not Excellent! I could have done no better. I could do no less in service with the Arisen. I thank you for coming to our aid. That was a tight spot you saved us from. And what luck! Nary a scratch on the wares to show for it. There is much we ought to tend to, if we are to strengthen your majesty's claim as a true arisen. You've done a fine job culling those monsters, Your Majesty. Tis common knowledge among the people that 'twas you who delivered them from danger. 
The number of those who seek out this tavern in the hope of an audience with the Arisen grows by the day. Should you continue to display such valor, the day will soon come when Disa can no longer deny your presence. And ere it slips my mind. Pray, take this. Tis a symbol of my own gratitude. You will need to infiltrate the palace to gather evidence of Deezer's misdeeds. I hesitate to ask something so dangerous of you. I have attempted to do the same through my own channels before now. Though, I have yet to uncover so much as a whisper of her plots. Would that I could undertake the task myself, but my station prohibits me from reckless action. What say you, Your Majesty? Might I ask this task of you? I shall ensure that the door to the Queen Regent's office is open between midnight and dawn. Pray use that time to conduct your investigation. You are the Arisen, yes? The captain gave me your description. Follow me! Guards spy you. I will be forced to play my part. Pray be cautious, Your Majesty. Who's there? Pray, keep your voice low. Twouldn't be good for either of us if someone was summoned to come check on me. Could it be that you have come to bring Mother's schemes to light? I, I am Sven, the son of Queen Regent Deesa. Mother has been acting rather strangely of late. I thought to investigate the matter whilst she was away. I gather tis the same for you. I can't imagine what else would have summoned you here. to say that you are the true Arisen, that the Sovereign currently residing in the palace is a pretender. Could Mother have had a hand in that as well? Regent Kin Sven appears to be missing from his chambers. Have you seen him? Me? No, sir. Then start searching, you fool. Should aught befall the Regent Kin, tis us who'll answer to her grace. Forgive me. My absence seems to have made this rather more difficult for us. You ought leave the palace at once. This room turned up little of interest, but I have a mind to look into this further. I shall send word to Captain Brandt if I discover aught you should know. I'll head out first and speak with the Sentinels. Use that opportunity to make good your escape. How fared your mission? Was there aught suspicious to be found in the Queen Regent's office? This scrap. It was part of a letter. And from Batal, no less. This alone can prove little, but tis clear that Deezer's schemes run deep. To think, Deezer's actions have weighed even on the mind of her own son. Tis a surprise, but a welcome one. Deezer is a, the doting mother before the Regent King. If Regent King Sven is willing to aid us by drawing Deezer's focus, 
we may be able to gain here more useful information. You have done well, Your Majesty. Though I am limited in the aid I am able to offer, I bid you take this. I bear word from Regent Ken Spen, Your Majesty. He espied the delivery of a suspicious package to a man named Allard. A minister who happens to be one of the Queen Regent's staunchest and most powerful allies in the palace. From the pains he took to remain on scene, it is plain that Allard wished this delivery kept away from prying eyes. That alone is reason to suspect a connection to Deezer's schemes. We must get to the bottom of it. The Regent Kin intends to call Allard to his chambers come nightfall. He bids you to use this opportunity to search the Minister's chambers and see if there's aught to be learned. What say you, Your Majesty? Are you willing to undertake this task? I shall ensure that the door to the Minister's chambers is open between midnight and dawn. Pray, use that time to infiltrate and uncover aught worthy of suspicion. We have been entrusted with a task. Let us approach it with all due care. It would seem we have a need to visit the palace. What business could be so pressing that I must be summoned at this late hour? I would not presume to know, my lord. However, it must be a highly sensitive matter for the Regent Kin to request a private audience. Oh, perhaps the boy has finally grown wise to the benefits my favor can bring. He might just be his mother's puppet, but at least he knows what's good for him. M my lord, if someone were to overhear... Oh, unring your hands, you fool! As if anyone in this palace would dare say a word against me. Now, if Wilhelmina calls, tell her to await me in my chambers. I will return presently. None more important than this. I speak of the ascension of the Sovereign. Indeed. But that, Your Grace, would be better discussed in the presence of your mother. I know this sigil well. Tis the crest of the neighboring country of Batal. A land with which Vermin has no official dealings at present. Let me see. It reads, True to our word, we offer you the power of the God's way. Pray make haste in securing Melv, that all might be made ready ere our plans are set in motion. A meager clue, to be certain. Though, it is clear that the Queen Regent conspires with Batal. This does not bode well at all. Though the political situation is stable at present, much blood has been spilt between Vermund and his neighbor in the past. I fear such a partnership would only portend the drawing of more. At any rate, to seem our search has led us to only more questions. Chief among them, what is meant by securing Melv and this God's way? I will investigate these matters as best I can. In the interim, Your Majesty, should you have time to spare, might you make for Melv? Only once we have gleaned a fragment of the Queen Regent's plot. Can we begin to thwart it? And ere it slips my mind, pray, take this. Perchance it will help speed you on your way to Melv. Queen Regent Deesa appears to be working in concert with this Phasis fellow. But what precisely is that? You have my support. Hurry up! 
everyone! Get yourselves to safety! You go with them. I will fell that thing myself. Then. in determination. Somehow I knew you'd come. You have my gratitude as well, sir. Ulrika, glad I am to see you unharmed. You must return to the village. Everyone is concerned for you. Forgive me. I'd best go. But I shan't forget this. Thank you. Truly. That wasn't the dragon, but a poor imitation of it. No wonder I feel so hollow. Sigurd, you're the current Arisen, aren't you? I pray you do not walk the same path as I have. Tis a style all my own. A patchwork of techniques honed for the sole purpose of slaying the dragon. Or shall change once we have attended the coronation. If your majesty has any unfinished business to attend to, it is best you do so before we depart. Very well. The coronation is to take place on the morrow. We shall depart early in the morn, so your majesty would do well to get a good night's rest. may fall to law. Let us return to the tavern. False Sovereign commanded the pawns at the coronation, proving his own powers arisen. According to Regent King Sven, the pretender was wearing some sort of lavish necklace at the time. I imagine this artifact is the godsway mentioned in that letter. 
Perchance it is a tool that grants power akin to that of the true arisen. It would do much to explain the events that we have beheld afore now. Alas, unless we find some way to unmake this God's way's power, proving your majesty's legitimacy shall be difficult indeed. Pray, allow me time to search for a way forward. I shall inform your majesty when I have prepared a plan of action. Regarding the matter of the God's way, I fear there is naught to be done, save for your majesty to venture to Batal, where you might uncover the false sovereign's secrets directly. The sigil upon that letter from some days past bore the crest of the Batali Palace. Surely there's ought to be found therein. Yet official dealings twixt Batal and Brumund are suspended. Passing through their fortress will prove a difficult task. With such hindrances in mind, I thought to prepare this. Pray, take it. Few may pass through Batal's fortress, save Beastron merchants. With some coin, I was able to convince one such merchant to grant us that entry permit. It ought guaranteed passage through the border checkpoint. But alas, tis intended for a Beastron. You shall have to act the part. But as to how that should be done, I am shamed to say I do not know. It will depend upon your majesty's ingenuity. You the Arisen. I've been looking for you. Sven wants to meet with you. Says he'll be waiting in his quarters. I heard from Captain Brandt that you plan to make for Batal in order to continue your investigation. As for me, I've been looking into my mother's movements since last we met, and I happen upon this. Tis a letter she discarded, only half written. It seems to be addressed to someone called Phasus. I passed an eye over it, though I failed to grasp its meaning, or, or what compelled her to throw it away. Here, I thought it best that you have it. Mayhap you could glean aught from it that I could not. And if you do, would you be so kind as to share it with me? That is only if you've the time to spare. I am in no position to make demands, of course. free of the chains of slavery that once bound you to this land, you return of your own volition. This is good. I am relieved to see that you are fulfilling your charge. Now, it would be advantageous for you and your pawn to visit the Rockmaster's borough in Bakbatal. Methinks it is where you will find that which you seek. Farewell. This place offers a view of the sea. I imagine we would not escape a plunge into the water's depths. Boy. What's your problem? Walking about with pawns in tow, I mislike that. You from Vermin? <laughs> Bet you're as prejudiced as the rest of your lot. Well, got something you want to say, eh? Save it. You're not welcome here. Suppose you didn't know, but we don't allow Vermundian scum in this tavern. But I've got a heart of gold, me. I'll give you a chance to redeem yourself. All you've got to do is prove your mettle against these sods alone. That is, if you're bested, then we'll take all you've got. It's only fair, ain't it? 
Put your back into it! Well now, quite the brawl we're having here. But I must say, these odds are rather craven. Did you leave your honor at the door? And who are you supposed to be? You a friend of this one? Nay, I'm a sellsword. Coin is my only ally. It is not my conscience that called me here. No, no. I simply cannot stomach acts of cowardice. Is there even one among you with the grit for a proper duel, one-on-one? -on -one? What'd be in it for us, eh? The fact that I'd refrain from breaking your jaw. Hmm, that's not quite the reaction I was hoping for. Mayhap you know not my face. How about my name then? Ragnar. Ragnar? You're him. From the Scarlet Reigns and the battle for Jeremiah? Well, tis clear you're a man best not crossed. But I trust you'll have no complaints so long as there's only one of us, aye? Oi, bring it out! Where's that reprobate gotten off to? We'll see if you can escape me a second time. Menace you are. Come on, you lot. We're leaving. <sighs> Fine work that was. Pray, save your thanks. I've no need of it. After all, judging by the skill with which you won that duel just now, I dare say you'd have bested those louts even if I hadn't intervened. I suppose that coward knew he was no match for you in a fair fight, so he had that beast take the beating for him. At any rate, tis safe to say you've piqued my interest. I hope our paths cross again someday. Of course, I can't promise I'll be as amicable then. As a sellsword, tis my policy to let my employer decide friend from foe. I'm sure you understand. Till next time. One cannot help but wonder about that Sir Ragnall. Who is he, really? I know not what to say. What business have you here? Does that make you... the Arisen? Be at ease. I bear you no ill will. My name is Manella, and I have the honor of serving as a go-between twixt Her Majesty and the Gar. Come, let me buy you a drink. We've much to discuss. And I don't fancy standing round all the while. Shall we make for the tavern? Have you a different destination in mind, Master? Very well. I shall follow your lead instead. The Arisen decides our path. We have but to follow. The people of Batal view pawns with great prejudice. They're even forbidden from setting foot in the capital. Her Majesty, Empress Nadinya, has long been troubled by this custom, but a practice so ancient isn't easily overturned. Many are unhappy about the existence of this tavern, even though it lies outside the capital, simply because it was established as a place for pawns to gather. I know not what manner of person you are, but if you would aid me in my efforts to make the people of Batal more accepting of pawns, I would be glad to offer you a residence permit. It is a bargain more than fair, for those who hold such permits may remain in Bakbatal without having their activities questioned. What say you? Glad I am to hear it. Take this, then. Simply show it to one of the sentries and you'll be granted entry to the capital. Oh, and if you encounter any troubled Batali along the way, I bid you assist them. They are harsh in their persecution of the pawns, but were they to be aided by the targets of their ire, 
Mayhap a few stubborn hearts would soften. A simple plan, I know, but is the only one available, or so it seems to me. I bid you good fortune, Sir Arisen. All knowledge of this, God's way, stems from the forbidden magic of search laboratory, which can be found here in the town. However, you would do well to first travel to the altar of the Tal coast and seek a man named Ambrosius. For as a researcher of this laboratory, he will doubtless be able to answer many of your questions. Who are you? Uh, no, never mind, it is of little import. I'm searching for blue crystal shards. Find any, and I'll pay you handsomely. The bigger they are, the higher your reward will be. found any blue crystal shards? Is that all? Tiny fragments such as these aren't nearly good enough. Still, I expect I'll find a use for them. Here, take your coin and be gone. Tis a god's sway. Well, to be precise, the crystalline substance from which tis made. By refining such crystals, anyone can attain the power of the Arisen. The power to command pawns, that is. However, small fragments are meaningless. They cannot contend with the Arisen's power, you see. Speaking of which, should you find any large fragments, bring them to me, won't you? Though that might be difficult, we've scoured this area quite thoroughly, I should think. It is possible larger shards may have been mistaken for jewels and carried off by scavengers or collectors or some such. Mayhap one such as the Oracle or the Dragonforged would be able to aid you in locating them. I can tell you no more than that. Since times of eld, dragon blood has been used to refine all manner of equipment. I myself learned the art by deciphering ancient texts. Remember, draconic blood flows through the veins of lesser drakes as well. Bring me what ye reap, and I shall harness it to your benefit. So long as ye retain your will, You'll find you're bound to it, and it to ye. The Godswain. Forgive me, but I've ne'er heard of such a thing. However, some years past, a sorcerer of Batal came to me seeking knowledge of the dragon, just as ye have. Faces, sir, I believed he called himself. It appeared his intent was to alter the will of the world through mortal means. Perhaps there is some connection. Then go. But visit me again when ye have spilled draconic blood. I knew you would come, a risen one. You seek answers, and you shall have them, if tis within my power to know them. Loath as I am to admit it, I know little of the artifact of which you speak. <laughs> 
though I shall tell you aught I can. I sense a land soaked in warmth, a warmth akin to your own arisen, to that of the power of the life you possess. Yet it now lies many fathoms below the surface of the sea, in a place unreachable by mortal hands. Though it is strange, for I sense also that this warmth grows ere near. To seem a path will be open to you in time, allowing you to venture into the heart of this warmth, so like your own. Perhaps he who was Dragonforged can tell you more. Seek him out in Harv Village, if you would learn from him. About time you came along. I have a special tale to share with you today. Or so I'd like to say, but it is getting rather late. Best spend the night. We can talk again come the morn. Ah, good. You're awake. Look to the sea, my friend. Hard to resist setting out in one's boat with fair skies like these, eh? <laughs> now, I've told you about the sunken temple in the middle of the sea, haven't I? I, I'm quite sure I mentioned it. But I ne'er spoke of the man who resides there. He was such a worthy ruler in life that his armies safeguard him even in death. As he himself would have it, he was once entrusted with the task of watching over this world from the heavens above. Yet he tired of his duty and abandoned his perch in the sky in favor of founding a small kingdom on the ground. Alas, though he was a just and goodly ruler, there is not a single person alive who remembers his name. It sounds unfortunate, but if you ask me, it is all a matter of perspective. It can be a blessing to forget, and to be forgotten. I should know. In all my long years, I've never forgotten a single thing. I remember everything, every little detail. Would that I could forget some of it. <laughs> a lie it may seem, but a lie it is not. I speak only the truth. As you well know. Come see me again if it pleases you. <laughs> I've tales are plenty to share. seen the like. I'd not known there were ruins in the depths of this cavern till the path appeared. Twas magic, methinks. I should have liked to investigate. The place hadn't been crawling with monsters. I'll be needing sturdier arms than these before I head back in there, I fear. At any rate, I'd best report this discovery to my commander. I only pray Nort Grave shall come of it. <laughs> Aught has occurred within the depths of Stormwind Cave, but what? I know not what to say. So, another comes seeking to inter me. Yet your wicked schemes will avail you not, watching one. Time and again have you sent unto me your minions. Yet repel them I have, and so I shall anew, till I might claim the true world as mine own. Why do you not draw your blade? This battle shall be all before it has even begun. You seek not my death. Hmm. Then you are not of the watching one. 
I am Rothas, founder of the kingdom of Vermund. And you appear to be a reason. Tell me your reason for coming here. God's way. Hmm. Speak you of those trinkets conjured by the wizards of Batal. Even from these depths, I have beheld the Batali scuttling about, gathering their fragments. It is a baleful, maddening act to transmute the fractured souls of Arisen into such frivolous baubles. Aye, that which you seek is a soul much like your own. Yet rarely will you find one intact, for splinters are all the remain of those pitiful arisen who were bade come here by the Watching One to end me. The flesh may rot, the soul fragment, yet power, power endures. And would seem the Batali seek to augment this power through their perverted arts. Though to what nefarious end, I know not. Yet tis folly, the frolicking of children. Such a trinket could ne'er hope to fell the dragon, let alone the watching one. I know little of your intent. But I sense in you a powerful will. A will that urges you towards fulfillment of some great feat. I shall grant you this blade. It too is the soul of an arisen. Mine own, in fact. Refined in purest dragon blood. Alas. The ages have taken their toll. Tis as withered as mine own flesh. Yet, mayhap, the Batali's profane magics would be capable of drawing forth its late potency. If that is what you seek, Arisen, then go on to their stronghold. I believe tis there you shall find the means to achieve it. You know, the usual. From Vermont, bound straight for the archives, not to be opened. Another one? What is the director up to? Well, never mind that. Did we get any other deliveries today, perchance? Surely you're not expecting another one of your love letters. Why, just the other day, you were warned not to use this address for personal correspondences. You really mustn't be so imprudent. Need I remind you that if word of our activities here was to get out, we could be shut down. Yes, yes, I'm well aware of that, thank you. Now come, enough gossiping. We've work to be getting on with. No, 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 this is all wrong. What use are pitiful fragments such as these? But what we have achieved is sufficient to sway the pawns. But when the time comes to fell the dragon, I fear it may not be enough. Lord Phasus insists we shall succeed, and yet... Ah, a new hand, are you? 
Have you some business with me? Why? Tis an arisen. This... This is incredible. But why do you possess such a thing? Where did you obtain it? No. Never mind. Tis of no consequence. All that matters is this. With this alone, I shall be able to craft a superior godsway, the finest of all created to date. I must make haste that I might deliver it to Lord Phasus even a moment sooner. But wait, no. I have not the Worm's Life crystals to restore it. Concern it all! Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, don't be ridiculous! Do you even understand what you are offering? Worm's life crystals can only be obtained from drakes. But I suppose I am in no position to decline, even if tis a fool's errand. Lord Phasus is satisfied with the God's way as tis, you see. And as I can expect no support from him, you can expect little aid from me. Though I suppose twouldn't do to send you away entirely empty-handed. Feel free to take what you require from the laboratory. Now, as I've said, Worm's Life Crystals can only be obtained from drakes and their ilk. Seek one out and fell it, if tis within your power. All the better if it happens to be a lesser dragon. You would be solving two of my problems, then. While traveling beyond the rift, I uncovered a tr- Tis clear to me that my fate is to aid you. Ah, but which dragon do you seek? The dragon that stole your heart shall appear before you when the time is come. If instead you seek the so-called lesser dragon, you would do well to pay a visit to Dragon's Breath Tower. When you find your quarry, mayhap this time, you will bring it low. If tis yet another dragon you seek, then perhaps you ought to search for it yourself. Your feet will guide you no less ably than any revelation on my part. Hail Arisen, allow me to join you in this trial. Right, just follow me. I can guide you to the vicinity of our destination, Master. Hot Goblin!
shall teach you a technique. Use it well. If we've the item in hand, we ought not keep the recipient waiting. We need only pass our burden into the hands that await it. That's just what I was thinking. You've returned. Have you obtained any Worm's Life crystals? You have? Incredible! That is no small feat. I must admit, I had not thought you much chance of success. Yet here you are. And this, this is precisely what I require to complete my work. I shan't delay. Come by again tomorrow. By then, I will have produced a godsway of unparalleled quality. Oh, it is finished. The result is even more sublime than I'd hoped. <laughs> I must deliver it to Lord Phasus at once. Though, mayhap. No, I cannot leave this in your hands. I may not be fleet of foot, but only I can do this. Deliver the blade to Lord Faces. You won't reach him in time. Go now. Make haste for Moonglint Tower. There your journey will come to an end. One way or another. Is a chest. Let us hope your curiosity will be. Re Gigantus, friend or foe? Indeed. Where is it bound, I wonder? It would really be better if it stayed still. Given the size of it, it could crush us all underfoot. Retreat soon. I fear we are all lost. We ought to press on, my lord. Mind not the stone puppets, then. We move. It arose from the sea. What could have summoned it? Yeah. 
supposed to be pursuing Lord Blazes. Yes, of course. I see it now. It would seem the stone puppet has stopped. Have the wounded been tended to? Yes, my lord. Good. I trust you are prepared, Sovereign of Vermont. Will, will it really be all right? I, I'm not about to be charred, am I? Fear not. You are in no danger. The dragon shall be under my control when it appears. Come, let us press onward.
dragon. Heed my call. Your will is mine to command. Curses. This arrival of the true risen is most inopportune. Sovereign of Vermin, the ritual must not be disturbed. Let not the arisen approach. You can manage that, I trust. It is a vital Watch as this world's hollow and fruitless order is remade by my hand. Existence determines all. Hast thou summoned the resolution to face me? Then answer me this. Why dost thou fight? Is it to reclaim thy flesh, thy stolen heart? Or is it to reclaim thy throne? I offer thee a choice. Grant unto me this life in my cause, and be gone from this place. Or stand and fight. Pitiable arisen. The time for thou to make thy choice is come. Show me the path thou wouldst walk. Go, and thou shalt live. 
live to claim thy coveted throne. Turn back. Leave now, while you can. Is your will? Then behold, a world unmerciful, left with the level of hands of darkness.
is strange, but this is your world, the world to which you longed to return. Alas, if only you had chosen to become sovereign. At the end of your travails, you could have ruled over these lands in perpetual peace. Yet that world of limitless possibilities has entered. You stand now upon its remains, the vestiges of a world that could have been so much more. Innumerable wills have served to deliver this world from extinction time and time again. You alone have refused to carry out that great purpose. What you see before you is the consequence of your apathy. Behold. This world will soon cease to exist. In the blink of an eye, the sickle of oblivion will reap aught that you have known. I would advise you not to waste these last moments. Explore the remnants of this world while you can. Perhaps in doing so, you shall come to see the truth and know the wretchedness of a world unworthy of being chronicled. How shall you fare, I wonder? Will you endure in this world, abandoned and unprotected? Arisen, you yet live. I suspected as much, given that your pawn still remains. One might hypothesize that your pawn is sustained by your vital essence. Or perhaps something more. In any case, we ought to apprise one another of the situation. Is there aught you would know? Ah, yes. I trust it has not escaped your notice that the end of days is upon us. After you vanished, together with the Red Dragon, the seas rose to swallow the skies. Twas perhaps a month from that evil day when a new calamity befell us. A host of dragons descended from the skies and fell upon the land with fang and claw. Luz the Oracle called upon me ere you arrived. As she tells it, Melv and its environs have already fallen prey to the beasts. Tis surely only a matter of time before the rest of the kingdom follows suit. I found the poor creature collapsed by the wayside near Batal. Recognizing your pawn, I decided to take the ailing thing into my custody. I thought it possible that the Arisen's pawn might hold the key to making sense of all this madness. Alas, try what I might, your pawn will not wake. Mayhap you will succeed where I could not. The pawn is, after all, yours to command. Indeed, then I shall take my turn. In your absence, I had hoped your pawn might yield me some information. But as you have returned, I would hear the truth from your lips. Tell me, Arisen. What became of you this past month? So following your plunge into the sea on the dragon's back, 
Some mysterious presence reached out to you. Could that have been the world forged? Yet why would such a being linger in those fathomless depths? I can only speculate. And speculate I shall. This ought to prove a fruitful avenue of investigation. For that, I thank you. Now, if you can find a way to end this interminable slumber, your pawnee is, of course, free to rejoin you. Oh, Master. How long I've slept? Far too long, it seems. But worry not. Now that I am awake, I shall follow wherever you lead. I admire your dedication, Master. Tis no small feat to hone one's skills so fine. We pawns must endeavor not to fall behind. So you're here, are you? Now that I think of it, I do seem to recall Lord Phasus lamenting that he be reduced to aiding you. But it matters not. Both he and I are too rushed off our feet to care for such trivialities. We seek to devise some means of forestalling these dragons' attacks from above, you see. If you've an interest in helping us fight this battle, perhaps you will join us on Volcanic Island. Tis all the same, either way. This world needs no arisen to save it. Such is Lord Phasus' creed and mine. What has become of the world? Would that there was someone who could explain this madness. Come to think of it, did not Sir Rathaeus speak of releasing the world from its bonds in the seafloor shrine? If this is indeed the world unbound, then perhaps we ought to seek out his wisdom. I can scarcely see a thing in this murk. I've been here so long. My back's are so stiff. Couldn't hurt to put my feet on the metal because I stumbled. saw the sky fall, I trust. I doubt you could have missed it. And wherever the sky falls, a dragon soon appears to lay waste to the land. Or so I had assumed, after what befell Melv. Yet aught here appears to be different. Has our ruin been forestalled, or merely postponed? I must examine that creature may well be the key to unraveling the origins of this cataclysm. The path through this rock has been sealed to us. There's naught for it but to search for an ultimate... Many paths are closed to us now on account of the dragon's descent, no doubt. But we must find a way to reach it. Confound this obstruction! I suppose I ought to have expected this. Answers were ne'er so easily won. Monsters! Summoned by that beast, no doubt. at the heart of all this destruction.
No longer do I feel the probing gaze of the Watching One. Is this your doing, newest of the Arisen? I am he who brought the dragon low, and o'er its bones raised the proud kingdom of Vermin. Despite the magnitude of my feet, I was dissatisfied and sought air greater heights, till at last I ruled the world entire. Thus did I come to know of the Watching One. The being by whose many eyes and ears no one or thing in this world goes unobserved. As to the purpose with which they watch, I know not. Yet I did divine one thing. This world has lain neath the Watching One's unwavering gaze ere the dawn of its history. I despair. All is but a stage. Did that not render my hard won glories, my throne astride the world, mere spectacles for the all seeing eye to watch? Why, twas was all a farce, and I, the fool, exulting in my wooden crown. Do you understand, newest of the arisen? This is why I sought to fell the Watching One. Alas, though I cut down all who seemed false, be they man or woman, human or beast, young or old. Indeed, my efforts led only to my own ruin. I was dubbed the Mad Sovereign. And by the hand of a new arisen, consigned to this place forevermore. Yet, I can only assume that you have achieved what I could not. How else to explain the changes I sense in the world? Ah, what bitter gall that I cannot witness the outcome for myself. Falter not newest of the arisen, for your path is just, and fading spirit though I am, I may yet summon those who can be of aid to you. I see you have returned, arisen one. The Mad Sovereign has called, and so we answer. If you would save the people of this world from ruin, lead them here. For this place may chance to escape the coming destruction. Your Majesty, how glad I am to see you safe. Where have you been this past month? The end of the world. Are things truly so dire? Though, I am aware of the dragon attack on Melv. We received word that naught but a smoking ruin remains. Twas a tragedy, and I would not see it repeated. However, without a clear path, we and the guard shall be hard pressed to forestall the impending crisis. You would have me evacuate the city? I see. Mayhap it would be for the best. Ever since the fall of Melv, the citizens of Vernworth have lived in fear that their homes are next to be assailed. If there is safe harbor to be found elsewhere, I believe we have naught to lose by seeking sanctuary. But I doubt I could convince the people of this city to abandon their homes, however terrified they may be. Methinks your majesty would do better to ask this of the Regent King. After the false sovereign vanished and the world was altered, his grace has been the one keeping order here in Vermont. If the people will heed anyone, tis him. Maintaining order in Vermont must be quite a burden upon the young regent, Ken. Let us aid him however we may. Of course.
So you've come. I'm glad to see you. Captain Brandt has already apprised me of your proposal. A full-scale evacuation of the citizenry. Truth be told, I had reached the same conclusion. So long as we cower within these walls, we must live in fear of going the way of Melv. My ministers have approved the plans, and I have petitioned the encampment survivors and the Thieves' Guild for aid. The only remaining obstacle is my mother. She has set herself stubbornly against any such flight. I have tried to make her see reason, but of late she has taken to shutting herself in her chambers. However, I cannot bring myself to leave my own mother behind. If I cannot convince her, I mean to remain here and share in her fate. Now, there are a few matters I must attend to before we can evacuate, and I would fain welcome your assistance. We will require several ox carts to carry the sick and aged out of the city. Might I prevail upon you to petition the merchant at the ox cart station in the west of the city for their use? You may assure him that the royal treasury will foot any and all expenses. Be gone with you, ruffian. These carts are mine. I paid good gold for them. And if you think I'll surrender a single one, you'd best think again. I require the use of all of them to transport my wealth to safety. Fine. What are you doing? Put that away. No, spare me. I pray you. I fear for my life. Well, reckon he won't be coming back here in a hurry. As a matter of fact, I'd like to thank you for that. It didn't sit right, see, having my wares claimed by some puffed up minister trying to save his own skin. Anyhow, as long as I've got my gold, who takes the carts is no concern of mine. And if that craven comes crawling back, I'll tell him bandits took them. They say a crisis reveals one's true character, but that man was no less miserably selfish than he always seemed. Right you are. Ah, you've returned. How fares your procurement of those carts? Thank you. However, I cannot bring myself to leave my own mother behind. If I cannot convince her, I mean to remain here and share in her fate.
revel in the knowledge that this region has escaped its destruction. monster we have yet encountered. We must face our foe on However fearsome it is. Here's hoping this will be enough to forestall the Red Cloud's advance for a while. I see you do not relent. Your persistence is most intriguing. What is it that impels you? Would that the world had not come to this. For I am certain that your tale would have been a glorious one. Yet, it was not to be. You need only cast your gaze upward to glimpse the futility of your defiance.
to unfold. Yet, it seems I will not be there to watch it 